Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today we're going to have a bit more Q&A. Questions I've received from artists all over the world and it's great to be able to sit down and go through these and send out answers. And a few of them I think would be best shown on video and we're going to have a look at a few right now. First question from Camilla is how to layer paint wet over wet without making mud. Now this is quite a common problem and it does seem daunting at first when you picking up a lot of wet paint and putting it down over other colors. It can quickly get out of hand. So here's a quick uh, demo of how I suggest you do it. So how do you layer wet into wet without creating mud. So let's say I've got my greens over here and I want to put in some orange. Okay, so a fair amount on the, the brush there. Let's, okay, so we've got our autumn red. Layer it over the green. Okay, no problem. But as you can see, I've picked up a lot of the wet green. So after you've put on your stroke you've got to turn your brush over. If you've got some paint you can use on that side. No problem. But I've also picked up green. Now if I go back in i am start to mix things up. And if you try to fix things up you're going to end up getting that sort of knock back effect where the greens now heading into some sort of yellow ochre. Things can go wrong, especially if you bring in a lot of white. You suddenly got that sickly color. So the way to work is you put down your color, lift your brush up, wipe the brush clean, pick up more color, put that down, clean off your brush. In that way you can actually mix Here's a, a lot of ultramarine for instance. You can put that down nice and clean. A little bit of interest there, a little bit of broken color which is good. And you've picked up color there so now that brush is dirty. Wipe it off and you can use it again. The next question I've received quite a few actually about how to sign your paintings. A lot of artists feel that a big signature is distracting. A lot of artists are confused about what color to use. Some say use the color you used last in your painting. Others say just pick a color. Well, I can give my view on this because especially when you're starting out, your confidence is a bit low and you're not quite sure if you're being arrogant <laughs> Even signing the painting um, seems presumptuous in, the, in that case. I guess we can look back at the old masters and they didn't even sign their paintings at all. And uh, how much trouble has that caused people today trying to track who painted a certain painting? Was it an original by an old master or one of his apprentices? There was just no clue from the artists themselves really, or no obvious clue. So let's think positive. So sign them. Sign them clearly. Um, what I find is just pick a color. I've chosen red light. No matter what the painting is, I use red light. And most often I'm signing the painting wet into wet anyway and it merges nicely. It's important that your signature is legible, that it can be seen you must be able to read it and identify the artist. I think that's important. Collectors do want other people to see the signature. Um, it's a, kind of like a label as well. And in this day and age, that is important. So don't worry about whether you're famous or just starting out. It makes no difference. Pick a color, stick to it, and my suggestion is make it 
nice and visible, but not ridiculous either. You don't want to go over a quarter of your painting. So I pick the right hand corner, just print out my name. That's it, forget about it and move on. Right, the next question is what sort of paint do I recommend? In this case, oil paint. There are so many brands on the market and you know, as I've said before, there is bad paint, there's average paint, there's good paint. And I'm talking here student quality. You don't have to get artist quality paint. I mean, a tube of cadmium artist quality paint is, is pretty hectic priced. And if you don't know how to use the paint, it's not going to look any different from student paint anyway. So get good quality student paint and rather spend time learning how to use the paint effectively. So what do I recommend? In my opinion, the best value and quality student paint is Classico by Maya Mary. It's an Italian company. Unfortunately, the marketing leaves a lot to be desired. It's quite difficult to find this paint. Um, well, if you're in bigger centers, it'll be easy enough. But it's quite a battle in South Africa. Unfortunately, Art Savings Club is now stocking it as well. So get yourself some Maya Mary Classico if you can. There's no fillers and binders and all sorts of nonsense in it. It's basically pigment and linseed oil. It comes in a 60 milliliter tube, which is excellent. So in my opinion, best value, good quality student paint. All right, an interesting question I received in a live um, video demo a week ago was, unfortunately I missed the name of whoever asked it, but I was asked, how do you mix uh, Vermont green? Greens that you find in the state of Vermont, in the US. It was an interesting sort of question and it made me think, of course there's all sorts of greens in any part of the world and uh, Vermont's no different. But I looked up a few uh, stock pictures of Vermont and found one and uh, I'm going to just play around now and show you my interpretation of Vermont green and uh, maybe pushing the envelope a little with some of those colors. So let's have a look. Now let's start off with the sunlit yellows over here. And you could use yellow light for that quite easily. Most greens in sunlight are very yellow. Now there is some green involved. There will be some blue as well. So we put in some blue and we've got quite a warm green. There's touches of orange as well, so a little bit of red light. will get you the, the sort of autumn yellows. But the point here really is that sunlight in the green gives you very yellow greens. And some of the cooler green over here is still very yellow, but it's got more blue in it. A little bit of cerulean gets you that sort of green. So pretty much all of those sunny greens between yellow lemon or yellow light, some cerulean blue, and you get really lovely, sunny, vibrant greens. Cool greens, these cool Vermont greens. So let's get back into a bit more cerulean. There's some ultramarine. I'm gonna bring in some yellow lemon. Mix it with that cerulean. We're getting that very strong and vibrant green. It's actually very close to a cadmium green, isn't it? And that would work in certain sunny conditions too. A little bit of white in there, just a minute touch. Getting a very strong, vibrant green. 
sort of indirect light maybe, or at certain times of the year that would even be a direct light. Some more yellow, tiny bit of white, and you're getting a powerful highlight. Does that look like a good powerful Vermont green in sunlight? I think it's definitely possible. Cool it down with a bit of cerulean. Getting a bit of shadow. Maybe these greens here. Yeah. Now these very dark ones you could use ultramarine. Touch of cerulean in there. And you get the dark you want. A little bit of alizarin. You get that more extreme dark. No white in there. That would make things too opaque. You want it more transparent in the shadows. Then these sort of really indirect greens. Let's try a bit of cobalt also nice and strong. Cools down the color very fast. That would do as well. The importance of keeping the color clean though can't be overstated. So if you find your green with the lemon yellow and the cobalt or cerulean is just too strident, a little touch of alizarin or red light will take care of matters and you get that slightly warmed up, not quite olive, but it's heading there. Put more cobalt in there and you get a really beautiful dark green, cool green, cold green actually. Put some ultra in there, darken it down a bit more. So look at this great variety of greens we're getting, really with so few colors. Let's get some tape off here and see if this looks like a little Vermont plein air style sketch. I play music and I think it's a good um, rhythm, good uh, mood enhancer and it really does get things going. So what music will, do I play the most? Um, actually mostly something from the 70s but uh, you can't go wrong with electric light orchestra so very often it's the greatest hits of ELO. I mean come on Mr. Blue Sky that's what I like to paint. <laughs> okay, well that's it for the Q&A. Um, please remember send in questions. You never know. It might be something I will show you on video. And don't forget you can sign up for a free painting course on my website or look for the link below this and uh, learn some valuable painting instruction for free. Right, so that's it for this week and I'll see you again next week. Cheers for now.